Birmingham, Alabama. A city erected as a business venture for 10 Southern entrepreneurs. In 1871, those men set out to construct an industrialist haven at the crossings of the Alabama Chattanooga Railroad and the South North Railroad. This crossroads was already well known for its mining potential, and in 1876, large-scale mining operations in Birmingham began. Birmingham was the only place in the world where limestone, coal, and iron ore could be found under one roof. This is the first known picture of Birmingham. Doesn't look like much, but word spread quickly of the small Alabama town that contained all of the ingredients for making steel. Entrepreneurs and rail tycoons, today laborers and migrant workers, arrived by the thousands. What began as a tiny population of 4,000 increased to a staggering 132,000 in under 40 years. At the 1904 World's Fair, just 25 years after its conception, Birmingham boasted the world's largest cast iron statue. Vulcan, the Roman god of metalworking, stood as a symbol for Birmingham to the world. All thanks to the minerals Birmingham held in her earth. Now, the very places that built Birmingham lay forgotten. Red Mountain was the centerpiece of Birmingham mining with 10 separate mining sites in 1950 alone. Aptly named for the red iron ore jutting from its earth, Mining on Red Mountain can be traced all the way back to the Civil War where it supplied ore to the Confederate troops. Red Mountain continued providing resources during wartime up as late as the World War II. We're looking at what's left of the mine's hoist house. Here, a network of cables dragged mining carts to the surface via a steam-powered electric turbine engine. That dilapidated machine is the last remaining steam mine hoist in Birmingham. The rails that once bent under the enormous weight of rock now lead to empty giants. Inslee Works, where the raw materials pulled from Red Mountain to the east were refined into iron and steel. The pig iron produced here required different methods of production than the basic iron blast furnaces seen elsewhere in the United States. Because of these differences, Inslee Works became a national standard to which future furnaces were built. The open hearths of Inslee Works were among the first tilting hearths utilized in the United States. Beginning in the late 1950s, the advent of plastics and more affordable mining overseas began to take its toll on Birmingham. Birmingham mines, furnaces, and economy began to close down. 1972 marked the closing of the last ore mine. 1976, Inslee Works let its furnaces go cold. Without a job to do, our symbols of industry patiently waste away. These very places built Birmingham. They deserve preservation. Not just for the work they have done, but for the history of Birmingham that they carry.